Today I want to dispel a belief system about recovery. And that's that anywhere in recovery, you can flip a switch and change behavior. It just doesn't work that way. I tried. I, I thought we were powerful enough and strong enough early on in recovery to say, well, you shouldn't feel that way. Or, well, I just need to stop feeling that way. Or, I would lie to Samantha and say, no, I don't have feelings at all. The affair is over. You see, there's something just unrealistic about that. When I hear a betrayed spouse tell me, well, you know, my spouse says that, you know, the affair's over, they turned it off, they, they told him it was done, and it's over. I say, okay, well, how long was the affair? And they'll say, you know, six months or two years or three years, five, ten years. I say, yeah, I don't really believe that you can just flip the switch and it's over and you're not going to have residue and that you're not, as an unfaithful, going to be grieving the loss and that you're not going to be struggling. It doesn't mean that that's bad, but it does mean that you can't just flip the switch and try and go back to regular life after such an incredibly emotional and painful ordeal. I can tell you this, when you as an unfaithful say that your you know, year long or however many year long affair is over in an instant and that you have flipped the switch, you create more concern in the heart of your betrayed spouse that you could allegedly go have this really emotional sexual affair with someone and turn it off like a light switch. I mean, you can't really do that in life without having a lot of residue inside. I mean, you're creating the image that you're a sociopath, that you can just have this big, strong, emotional affair and then you can flip the switch and go, no, nah, it's done, it's over. That's concerning because to say that there isn't going to be residue and that there isn't going to be a temptation to go back and that there isn't going to be this struggle and ambivalence inside of you, that's not taking into account the beast that you've created. Essentially, that's just not realistic. Now, I'm not saying that your effort to immediately cut off the affair, if that's the case, is ingenuine and not real and that you're not trying to do that. No, I think that's great, but I want to tell you, you're going to have to have a plan. If you think that you're going to cut off this big affair, whether it be highly emotional or highly sexual or both, or this addiction or what have you, if you think that you're just going to say, it's over, I'll never do it again, we're done, that part of me is dead, you can have a funeral for that part of you. You can do all kinds of different sentiments and, and ceremonies or what have you, and you can say all these things, but I want to tell you, as someone who's been right where you're at, that's not accurate. You're going to have to have a plan to walk it out to keep the switch off, because if you come from faith, call it the enemy, call it the devil, whatever you want to call it, is going to come and try and flip that switch back on. If you don't come from faith, I'm sorry, but habitual habit patterns and... Um, trauma bonds and emotional connections and soul ties and all kinds of different ways to say it are going to come back and want to flip that switch back on. So you have to have a recovery plan. To the person that decides to white knuckle it, I'm never going back, I'm not going to do it, you are more ripe for relapse than almost anybody because you have not admitted to the beast that lives inside of you and you are resting all of your recovery on your willpower when in fact your willpower shows us that you don't have the power to create the strength to prevent this from happening again because it wasn't supposed to happen in the first place. Now your retort may be, well things were different Samuel. I'm sorry. The most important relationships in your life, i.e. your family, your spouse, should not rest upon your willpower, but should rest upon recovery methods that you will put in place of accountability, of humility, 
of being able to find out why you did what you did in the first place, of being willing to do whatever it takes to create safety and security in the heart and in the mind of your betrayed spouse. Another way that we like to flip the switch is, if we're an unfaithful, we try and flip the switch in our betrayed spouse. We try and say, yeah, you're not going to talk about that anymore. Nope, you don't get to talk about those things. It's done. It's done. It's over. The affair is over. Our marriage is healed. Here we go. We're going to ride off into the sunset. Turn that switch off. Nope, no talking about it. Nope, no reminders, no triggers. Nope, you don't get to ask me why I did it or what was I thinking when I did it. Or No, no, no. Light switch stays off. I'm sorry. If you're an unfaithful doing that to your betrayed spouse, you're wounding them. You're disrespecting them. You're not giving them the opportunity that they need to process the trauma, heal from the trauma, and actually engage with you. So you're actually hurting yourself because if you can do it the right way, you're going to help your betrayed spouse actually connect with you on a deeper level, which will pay dividends emotionally and physically and really create more of a oneness. The more that you push them out of what you've done, and as much as you try and flip the light switch off, you're wounding them and you're actually pushing them further away rather than drawing them near to create a oneness and a unity that will actually help to affair-proof your marriage more and more. You see, I'm the master of trying to turn Samantha off like a light switch. Nope, not in the mood for that question. Nope, didn't ask me the right way. Nope, you don't get to feel that. Nope, you're wrong for feeling that way. Man, what a control freak I was. Some of my tendencies now can be like that. And so I have to understand that I don't have that right. That's not my right to try and turn Samantha's emotions off. It wasn't my right early on. It's, it's not my right now. And one of the best things that you can do is be able to have a plan for processing it, to be able to connect and have some boundaries and some guidelines. But as long as you try and flip the switch in recovery, it's going to fail miserably. We also try and flip the switch on, right? We also try and say, hey, let's be intimate. Let's connect. Let's kind of talk about life and let's be joyful and let's pretend like none of this has happened and that doesn't work either. Now, I know that I've been a pretty direct with you today. But I want to prevent you from doing what I did early on, which was trying to control switches in my spouse and thinking that I could just turn off old behaviors without doing recovery work. This is going to take time. The better help that you get will minimize the time it takes to heal and become whole. But the more that you reach for that light switch in your spouse, the more that you're wounding them and hurting them. Don't reach for the light switch in your spouse, reach for the light switch inside of you that says, okay, I need to be on right now, and I need to engage with my spouse and be empathetic and remorseful and help them process through the damage that I have created in their life.